Well, good afternoon. My name is Mark Safian with AWR Corporation. Uh, we're going to talk this afternoon about simulating a Class F power amplifier design using our microwave office circuit simulator and VSS system simulator tools. And the uh, amplifier that we're going to talk about is using a Cree gallium nitride 10 watt transistor. I'd like to express my thanks to a couple of people at Cree for the work they've done on this project. Uh, Bill Pribble for producing very high quality models for the Cree transistors and Ray Pengelly for uh, putting together the example circuits that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we do offer a full library of, key gal of Cree gallium nitride devices uh, available for our circuit simulation tools. So power amplifiers fall into two basic categories, uh, bias class and switching class amplifiers. Um, bias class amplifiers depend on the quiescent point and uh, typical applications include classes A, B, AB, and C. And switching class amplifiers are typically classes E and F. Um, and they're based on network configuration rather than bias conditions. A class F amplifier is an extension of classes B and E. And what we're trying to do here is basically waveform engineering. We want to control the shape of the waveforms at the, uh, at the drain to benefit our design in desirable ways. And what we're going to be looking at today is uh, providing matching networks that, of course, give us the fundamental performance that we're looking for, but also provide very specific terminations at the harmonics in an effort to improve the efficiency of our final design. And class F designs are definitely targeted at high efficiency, uh, and as we'll see toward the end, typically at the expense of linearity. So in an ideal world, class F waveforms look like this. The voltage waveform is in blue. It's a pure square wave. And the current waveform is in magenta. And this is a half sinusoidal waveform. Uh, you can see they both return to zero. Um, theoretically, we should be able to achieve 100% efficiency with this type of topology. But of course, 100% is a very funny number in our business. Uh, it would require infinite harmonics, and therefore, it's not a practical solution. What we're going to talk about today is simply limiting our engineering to not only the fundamental, but the second and third harmonics. And we'll take a look at the types of results that we can expect to get from this type of design. To obtain a, a half sinusoidal waveform for the current, odd harmonics for the current must be eliminated. To obtain a square wave for the voltage, standard Taylor, waves, uh, Taylor series expansion, all the even harmonics must be eliminated. And in a perfect world, both of these conditions will be met simultaneously, but a practical design is going to include some overlap and therefore, we'll see some associated degradation in the final performance. So a basic class F amplifier design looks somewhat like this. Uh, we've got the Cree CGH40010F device. Uh, this is a 10 watt transistor. Uh, we're biasing it with minimal matching in this case. And the real key element here is the quarter wave line in the drain bias. And we're going to use this line strictly at the fundamental for the initial investigation to provide the harmonic termination uh, for the voltage and current waveforms. Uh, it'll provide a high impedance for odd harmonics, a low impedance for even harmonics. And the idea is that we're going to reflect these back into the device that energy will recombine and improve the efficiency of the overall amplifier. 
In addition, you can see there's a series tuned resonator in the output. So using this very simple topology, these are the waveforms we achieve. You can see the uh, blue voltage waveform is approximating a square wave. Uh, keep in mind that these harmonic balance analyses were carried out with five harmonics. So we're a long way from the infinite harmonics required for that theoretical 100% efficiency. Um, you do have control, of course, over how many harmonics you consider, but from a practical standpoint, it's difficult to design matching networks that address very large numbers of harmonics and provide the appropriate terminations. And then the magenta waveform uh, is a little bit more interesting here. It is approximating a half sine, and you can see that uh, in this case, this is the uh, die model. So we're actually seeing the half sine wave flatten out at zero. A little later on in the presentation, when we go to a package device, you'll see non-ideal current waveform due to parasitics in the package. We don't have access to the actual die terminal uh, a little later on in the modeling exercise. But with just that single transmission line in the bias line, uh, this is the type of waveform that we're able to achieve. So the way we approach this, we're going to start off with a standard fundamental load pull. Uh, Microwave Office includes a load pull wizard that allows you to set up the range of uh, the Smith chart that gets swept. Uh, you can see we've got harmonic tuners on both the source and load side. And it's a little hard to read, but there are uh, impedance settings on both tuners for the first three harmonics. And that's going to be the extent of what we consider in this talk. So for the uh, initial analysis, we're doing just a, a fundamental load pull to determine the optimal points. And um, that's the wrong button. And so what we've done is we have run a load pull for gain on the left, fundamental power in the middle, and fundamental PAE on the right. Uh, you'll notice that all three points are relatively close to each other, which is fortunate because it means we don't have to make a whole lot of compromises choosing efficiency over gain or power. Um, so you can see the values here. Um, we've got about 13, and a half, 13 dB gain. Uh, this 10 watt device, which is the rating, is producing a little better than 10 watts at the output, plus 41 dBm. And by considering only the fundamental, we have uh, about 64.5% power added efficiency. Again, this is just considering the fundamental. The next step, since we're doing a class F design and our target performance is primarily power added efficiency, we're going to run additional load pulls, and we're going to load pull only for PAE now at the second and third harmonics. And the way we do this, if we go back to the schematic, we run the fundamental load pull, get the ideal impedances, and then we plug those values into the tuners for the fundamental impedances. When we come to do the harmonic load pulls, we'll actually set those fundamental impedances run the load pull on the second harmonic, and you can see that the efficiency is improved from 64 to 80 percent. And then we'll take the impedance value we get here for the second, go back and plug that into the harmonic tuners for the second harmonic, run the third harmonic load pull, and obtain the impedance that we're shooting for for the third harmonic. So again, these harmonic load pulls were run only for PAE. With those impedances in mind, we've synthesized matching networks. Uh, this is the input match. And these are the impedances that are presented to the transistor 
uh, we've swept here from 2 to 6 gigahertz for a 2 gigahertz design that represents the range from the fundamental to the second to the third harmonic. And then the same thing for the output. This is our output matching network. Uh, and these are the impedances presented to the transistor on the output side. Again, 2, 4, and 6 gigahertz. Uh, they're not exactly the impedances that load pull told us we needed. But as always, we're balancing complexity of the matching network against the realities of uh, you know, limitations in practical circuit design. So we've got our matching network synthesized. Uh, this then is the overall top level class F amplifier. You can see the input match sub-circuit on the left, the output match sub-circuit on the right, devices in the middle. Um, our harmonic terminations are all set up, and this is the performance that we're able to achieve. Um, of course, to get the efficiency, we're going to drive the device at the high end of the power sweep, so we're achieving a little bit over 14 dB gain. Um, again, our 10 watt device is producing comfortable margin uh, beyond the specified 10 watts, and our power added efficiency is um, a little bit over 80%. So pretty impressive performance um, based on, on this design. These are the waveforms. And here you can see what I was talking about a little bit earlier. The, the blue voltage waveform is, uh, is uh, returning to zero. But the magenta current waveform is going negative. And this is due to the parasitics associated with the model. We're no longer able to probe directly at the drain terminal. There are parasitics associated. And so we don't see the ideal waveform here. This is the harmonic output. So again, the uh, comfortably better than 10 watt output plus 42 dBm. And you can see that now we're not looking at the output of the transistor, but at the output of the amplifier. And we have very good harmonic rejection uh, by reflecting these signals back into the device. And our matching network is essentially passing the fundamental. Uh, worst case harmonic rejection is 23 dBc. So all this has been done with a uh, sinusoidal waveform. Uh, the final step in our analysis was to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Um, just wanted to point out that a, a straight class F amplifier is a fairly narrow band uh, circuit. Here we're achieving about 6.5% bandwidth for maximum power output. Uh, there are other topologies, uh, specifically continuous class F, which can offer much uh, wider bandwidth. And I can refer you to a webinar available online at the Microwave Journal site that Ray and I did a few months ago where we actually go into this continuous class F design in a lot more detail, just limitations of a 15 to 20 minute paper. Uh, and this is power added efficiency as a function of frequency. And you can see we're getting this 80% efficiency over a, a moderate range of, of frequencies. So the final step, uh, rather than constrain ourselves to just a sinusoidal stimulus, we set this up for our complex envelope analysis in our system tool, VSS. Uh, the big block in the middle is our amplifier circuit. And the extra pins are simply monitors for fundamental voltage and current, DC voltage and current. Uh, you can see we are biasing the device now at this level. This is actually our bias source going into the device. Uh, we've got a 64 qualm, 20 megahertz bandwidth input signal. And we're looking at the uh, amplifier biased for optimal PAE. This is the modulated spectrum. So we can see the input signal in blue with the skirts well off the chart. 
and the uh, amplified output in magenta. You can see the asymmetries associated with the uh, modulated spectrum, and that's due to the fact that we're not using a static model, but the dynamic complex envelope analysis. Um, this is available in the upcoming version of Microwave Office. And just as a final comparison, uh, I mentioned earlier that an amplifier of this type is going to be targeted at efficiency, not linearity. So here we've backed way off the input power just to show what a nearly ideal constellation looks like. And when we run it up to where the efficiency is at its best, you can see there is some distortion. But we still have fairly clean states. And we would expect to be able to recover these in a real system. However, you can see the compression evident at the corners. So in conclusion, we've shown a class F amplifier design. Circuit and system level capabilities have been demonstrated. And we'd love the opportunity to talk to you more about this on the booth. Thanks for your time.